Well, Klaus and Nobu, it's really nice to see you both again. And I trust you're keeping well as we get towards the end of summer and another COVID season. So, I'm fine, thanks. Good, good. good. So, a lot of people are talking about bets. And in particular, of course, the potential impact of both Pillars 1 and Pillars 2. And I wanted to catch up with both of you to get your perspectives on what people are talking about. And maybe Klaus, I, I turn to you first. Um, Germany, a large capital exporting country. What are German multinationals talking about relative to bets these days? Yeah, I'm happy to take this up, Rodney. So let's take a look at Pillar 1 first. Um, Formally, there would probably be maybe like two or three companies um, affected by pillar, pillar One in Germany. But if you take a closer look at the content of Pillar One, it's like with every content, every legislative change relating to transfer pricing, the content creeps in step by step anyhow. So it's not really so much a question of formal um, impact, but rather the, the question of informal or factual impact. And that's some, something which probably a lot more companies in Germany are concerned about these days. And I'm pretty sure they are rightfully concerned about this. If you take a look at Pillar 2, on the other hand, much more companies will be affected by it. It's uh, running up to 200 entities in Germany, I would say. Um, and, and here, the, the clear question is, how will, how will it look like at the end of the day? Germany, Germany is one of the high-tech countries. So at the end of the day, I would think that probably the profits to be allocated to other jurisdictions will increase and therefore the, the overall uh, tax burden will decrease of, of the German multinationals. Yet you still have the German CFC rules, which are pretty tight. And the question will always be, how are those two parts interlinked? How do they really um, play together, uh, Pillar 2 and German CFC rules? And I think that applies to other countries as well. And finally, the third element, the digital services tax, if you wish, which is not really an element of batch to know, but it's probably something which just comes in front of it. That's definitely something people have started to look, in he look into heavily these days because more and more countries um, come up with the idea to, to implement a digital services tax or something similar. Or even if you take a look at India with the significant economic presence, that's yet another story. So I think this is really something which, which um, bothers our clients quite a lot, and, and therefore um, those those topics are really high on the agenda these days. So that's really interesting, Klaus. That those concerns around Pillar Two and DSTs. That's a lot of stuff in and of itself. I can only imagine that um, what clients really need to be thinking about is like the financial impact, right? Modeling and how might this actually impact their company? Are you seeing? Um, folk focusing on the modeling of the numbers and how's that working? Yeah, that's, that's, indeed, that's indeed something which um, our clients step by step pick up. I mean, first of all, it, it, is, it is a question of, um, of educating all the stakeholders. There are so many people who really don't really want to know a lot about taxes, but they have to because um, Pillar 1 and also Pillar 2 will probably most likely have a significant impact on the value chain as such. So um, people have to think about the, the, the impact and the stakeholders need to be educated. And for that, the modeling is, is definitely necessary. So that's indeed something uh, which we have envisaged at least uh, to a certain extent. And uh, as you know, we, we as KPMG have come up with a modeling tool um, with a quite simply simple modeling tool, but that's something which can be um, advanced further if people really want to take a closer look and do a deeper dive, then, then we can um, make the modeling more concrete step by step. And I think that's definitely something um, our clients will, will ask us to do. Fascinating. And then your point on pillar one, uh, are you hearing that folk are concerned about the potential creep of the scope of pillar one so that almost de facto this becomes a controversy issue or, or something like that going forward? Yeah, that's, in my view, that's definitely uh, what's going to happen. I mean, hmm. one is far from being a harmonized adjustment of the global tax system. Actually, there is no global tax system, as everybody probably knows. Um, so the, um, the, the, the way local authorities take a look at 
at, at pillar one will deviate from country to country. And, and that inadvertently means that you will have controversy issues um, and you take a look at two or more countries. So, so that's definitely something where we'll see, where we'll see a lot of disputes in the future. I'm pretty sure about this. Well, that's fascinating, Klaus. So German multinationals are, are focused on this and in a number of key different ways, the creep of pillar one, financial impact of pillar two, and what the heck is going on with DST. So a lot, a lot on the mind in Germany. And, and so Nobu, I'm, I'm curious what the sense is in Japan, whether it's similar or how it's different. What are you hearing? I think it's uh, yeah, because you know uh, Japan is also the capital exporting nation, and and the previously the Japan uh, is you know the trading nation that conducts R and D activities and manufacturing activities mainly in Japan. But uh, at this moment, due to the uh, population shrink and then domestic market shrink, they uh, the company itself with uh, no country itself is capital ex exporting nation uh, moving to the capital exporting nation uh, that relies on uh, profits from the overseas top, uh, investment to capture especially fast growing overseas markets such as Asia. So in this respect, uh, the Japan uh, the, yeah Japanese taxpayers are welcoming the, this uh, you no know, globally fair competitive tax environment. Uh, uh, to be introduced uh, under the Pillar 2 initiative. Yeah. Um, and as for, as for the Pillar 1, uh, yeah, Japan, Japan case, I think at, uh, about five to seven Japanese multinationals will be affected. And as for the Pillar 2, uh, especially in relation to the income inclusion rule, uh, around 550. Uh, Japanese multinationals will be in scope and affected industries include automobiles, pharmaceuticals, manufacturing, construction, uh, and lots of in industri industries. Uh, further, uh, as you may know, uh, in Japan, uh, like Germany, uh, we also have strict uh, existing Japanese CFC rules. And uh, in this respect, the people are thinking that uh, they understand the purpose of the global minimum tax uh, and the Japan, uh, CFC tax system are different. Uh, they have the view that uh, it is desirable to avoid duplication of the two uh, similar tax systems uh, and also desirable to reduce the practical burden of the taxpayers by simplifying current Japanese CFC rule. Uh, and another concern is uh, the, the Japanese multinational sometimes have investment in uh, third low tax countries uh, via the United States. And they are wondering what the coexistence of the new US guilty uh, uh, and also the IRR will be. Because in a worst case scenario, uh, there may be a double application uh, of uh, US guilty and IIR according to the US Green Book. Uh, so that's really interesting, Nobu. So in many ways, a similar view to what Klaus was sharing that German multinationals have, which is pillar two is gonna have a wider application potentially than pillar one but a few more concerns about just the way that Japanese, many or some Japanese multinational structure themselves, including through the US, just this whole, uh, we're gonna have to see, is there double taxation by virtue of you know, tax reform in the US, the application of Japanese CFC rules and the, the rules of pillar two when they finally are finalized and just sort of, keeping a close eye on the incidence of double taxation. Fascinating. Well, look, both, I guess we're in a wait and see. We will shortly hear from the heads of government where things are going. And I can only imagine um, clients in both countries are going to be continued to focus on this uh, modeling and just really understanding what financially this will mean for the individual companies.
So just a great discussion, Nobu and Klaus. And look, I want to thank you for your time today. And uh, I look forward to catching up with you once we hear from the heads of government and we start to plot the way forward. So thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. You're welcome as always.